I'm just going to review a few moments because we've been through a lot the last uh, last 10 weeks. And uh, I believe we are living without question. We are living in the days of Elijah. Because Malachi says that the before the great and terrible day of the Lord, Elijah will reappear. Now, how many times has Elijah appeared? Anybody help me here? Three times? Okay. When did he appear the first time? When he came on this earth. When did he appear the second time? John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah. And the third time he's going to appear in the end time church. Say, that's me. Come on, that's me. That's me. I'm moving. In the spirit of Elijah. Which is the restoration of all things. Is that good? The restoration of all things. Fathers to children. Children to fathers. Come on. It's a time to restore the fathers to the children. It's part of the end of this age. And we're going to see. Now, what are the contrasts? Look at your notes if you would. Now, I'm going to read the introduction. Wow. We have just gone through the times of Elijah and his great anointing. We learn the pattern of God's dealing with Elijah. Let's go through it. This is true for every one of us. Say desert. desert. Fire. Fire. Abundance, of Abundance of rain. Say, that's my life. How many have been through a desert or two? Get ready. It's prepared you for the mountain and the rain. It's beginning to rain, Ron. Amen. Dr. Ron, it's beginning to rain. I felt that the last few weeks there's been a release. Now I'm taking this by faith and I'm not going to do another whole teaching in Revelation 12, 1 because you, you, you've heard it three weeks now. But I believe, I believe based on a Revelation 12, 1 that Satan has been cast out of heaven on March the 5th of this year. And if you want to know theologically why I believe that, I'll show you afterward. It's 1260 days following the sign in the heaven that I did a video on. Uh, I did it uh, three years ago. The Lord woke me up to, about a month ago. He said, Jerry, go back to Revelation 12. And I hadn't thought about that verse for three years. He said, go back to 12, Revelation 12. And I'm laying in bed talking to the Lord. I said, why? He said, count the days. That sign only appeared one time in, in, in 7,000 years where Virgo was lined up with the 12 stars at her head and the uh, Mercury and Venus and all, all the planets were aligned at her head. So there were 12 stars at her head. Then the sun was on her shoulder and the moon was at her feet. Perfect. In Re on September 23rd, 2017. Well, if you count 1260 days after that, according to Revelation 12, 8 and 9, you come to March the 5th. I prayed for a whole month. Every night when I took my Epsom salt bath, I just... <laughs> I'm commanding, you know, this the blessing of the Lord and Michael to do war in the heavens. Daniel caused a war in the heavens with his prayer. You know that? And Daniel called, caused Michael said, "You you you awoke a war in the heavens, Daniel." And for 21 days I've been battling over this thing. Trying to get this answer through to you, but man, you can't get through because I'm warring with Satan and his angelic hosts. I just take it for what it's worth. I'm going to go on faith that Satan has now been cast to this earth with his angels and that the heavens are now open Amen. around the world for a great world harvest. Yes, There'll be no more hindrances, Oscar. Yes, no more hindrances, Pastor. No more hindrances to the move of God. And Amen. come on, no more hindrances. It's our time. Let's take the harvest. Let's do the billion soul harvest. And Aunt, uh, Carol, what do you say about the billion soul harvest? Not enough. Not enough. See, I like this woman moves in authority, even though it's her birthday. We're going to have goodies today for Carol. Oh, God bless you. Praise God. All right. So that's the pattern. Of, see, that's the pattern of my life. That's the pattern of my life. Desert. Fire. Rain. Now, how many know some people want to go to the from the desert to the rain? They, want to, they don't want to pass through the fire. But the fire burns out of your life. Everything that's not supposed to be there. Amen. How many have been in a burning for a few years? I've been in a burning for 58 years, man. I've been in a cooker, the pressure cooker. 
And God's been burning out of my life everything that shouldn't be of His kingdom because He's making me more aware of His kingdom than ever before in my life. I am so excited about the kingdom of God. It's advancing. It's moving. It's, it's growing. It's increasing. While the world is going to hell, the kingdom is going to heaven. Hallelujah. Come on. I'm going to preach here. I'm supposed to be teaching. Thank you. I got your permission. All right. Abundance of rain means restoring all things at the end of this age. Jezebel says, by this time tomorrow, you will be as dead as my prophets. She said, Elijah, just like you slew all 850 of my prophets, 450 of Baal and 400 of Astaroth, he took out her whole worship team. He took out her whole staff. The report came back to the palace Jezebel, you better gather a whole new group of false prophets because your team is gone. Mm -hmm. It's over. You're done. Yeah. Wiped out. Mm -hmm. So Jezebel said, send a message to Elijah that by this time tomorrow in 24 hours, he will be dead. Yeah. I got a question. Was he dead in one day? No. Was he dead in one week? Was he dead in one year? Was he dead in one millennium? Has he ever died? False prophet Jezebel spoke a lie. She prophes she prophesied, not prophesied. She prophesied. We got a whole group up there now prof prof lying. Hello, you know what I'm talking about over our nation. They're just prophet lying. But Robert, you're prophesying. He's, he's, where did Rock, Ron Canoli go? Oh, oh, the bathroom. Okay, we'll let him go to the bathroom. All right. Thank you, Christina. You're just you're keeping on top of this whole thing. So I've got an announcement to make. Jezebel did not tell the truth. <laughs> Heaven overcomes everything hell raises up. Hello? When hell raises up, heaven overcomes. Get ready is the word I've been getting for six months. Every time I pray and seek God, I said, tell me, give me a word. He says, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. It's about to happen. Expect it. Elijah prayed that it wouldn't rain for three and a half years. And boy, he kept praying. It's happening already. Already, you're right, Ann. It's already happening. I mean, give it three months and gas is already $3. I mean, hello, that's just one sign. I mean, you just begin to see what God's about to do. You think he's heard the prayers of 70 million people? I think so. I think so. And even if there are only 7,000 left in the cave, hello. All right, now we're getting warmed up for the teaching, all right? There's a contrast now between Elijah and Elisha. Remember, Elijah was prof told to do three things. Now, I like Elijah. He, he really obeyed the Lord. He, he stood before Ahab and he said, Ahab, the God before whom I now stand, don't you like this guy? Has given me a word for you. And I'm going to obey this word, and it's not going to rain for three and a half years. So he, he, he obeyed God. He learned to obey God. He heard God in the desert. God was training him, as I said four weeks ago. He was training him at the brook to walk by faith. Yes. See, faith is like a mustard seed. You know why it's like a mustard seed? It's not because it takes so little faith. It, it be, it's because faith has such a great capacity to grow. That's why it's like a mustard seed. God's not saying, oh, just a little faith will work. No, he's saying, get ready. Your faith is going to grow into a tree that's going to bring shade to people. It's going to bring a place for birds to build their nests. Your faith is growing. And every day those crazy ravens showed up was another day that Elijah's faith got bigger. He was getting ready for the mountain. He wasn't ready when he went to the brook. Now God said, I got a little more testing to do. Send you to the widow's house. Go to, the, go to Zarephath, 
to the gate, a lady will show up that I've commanded already to meet you there. So this woman was not surprised when Elijah walked up to her and asked for her last bit of meal. God had already spoken to her. She said, I've commanded a woman to meet you there. So praise God for this widow woman. She evidently heard God's voice. She showed up at the gate same time Elijah did. Thank God for women that listen to God. In fact, I think it's women that are listening to God across America that's moving the whole body of Christ right now. A bunch of you women are awesome. Yes. Yes. Bless your child. I got a word for you. Amen. Is this a boy or a girl? It's a boy. I thought so. That's what the Lord told me. I was going to say that, but I. He's blessed. He's anointed in the womb. Amen. You ready? To raise up an Elijah yes. for this generation? Lord bless her and make this birth easy, Amen. comfortable, take away all pain. Lord, just make it a miraculous, beautiful birth and take this little baby as a new generation. Thank you, Lord. Bless her. I give a Father's blessing to you. Okay? God bless you. Elijah provided the mantle. Now, Elijah had three things. He had a mantle, he had a message, and he had a mission. See, that's all you need. Now, I like Elisha because Elisha received the mantle. See, mantles can be transferred. Anointings can be transferred. Yes. Anointings can be transferred. When I stood at that studio that day and Mom Taylor was on my broadcast, that's the most dangerous thing that ever happened to me when Mom Taylor laid her little meaty paws on my shoulder. She had prophesied at the, on the channel with me. She said, God said to me, you're going to be on the streets of San Francisco. I said, no, I'm not. I argue with her right there on TV. I said, no, I'm not. I said, I'm not. I have no interest in going to the homeless. I'm lined up two years. I got an airplane. I'm flying around doing evangelism. I got, I'm too busy. I'm, I'm scheduled. How many know you can schedule God out? It's called ego. It's called ego. Yeah. And so she's standing at the door. You know the story of the studio. And I'm getting ready to go home. Go, they're going to take me to the airport. I'm going to fly over the, the California desert back to my home up in the mountains and she won't let me out of the studio. She's just standing there. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> I know she didn't sound like a woman of authority, but she was. Let alone Mom Taylor from Possum Trot, Tennessee. Did you get that? Possum Trot, Tennessee. How many know where Possum Trot is? <laughs> You're from Tennessee, Carol, and you don't even know where Possum Trot is. It's up the road a piece, and they don't wear shoes up there until you're 18. Okay. So she laid her hands on my shoulders and she said, Lord, this man, here's what she said. She said, Lord, this man isn't listening. I'm, a, I'm the host of the broadcast, right? It's my program on TV, right? This man isn't listening. And I'm going to put an anointing on him right now to go to the homeless. You know what happened? Two weeks later, I'm on the streets of San Francisco and I was there every Saturday for seven years. We got a ship for the homeless. You know the story. It's a whole great, exciting thing. Elijah provided the mantle. And Elisha served Elijah. He was known as the man that washed the hands of Elijah. So if you want, listen, if you want a, a, a greater anointing, get around people that are anointed. You caught it. Trevor, you're not the same as when you started with this university. You've got authority. I saw you Saturday out there praying for that woman dying of cancer, that little lady pushing that thing around. I said, boy, God said, have Trevor come over and pray for her. I think you've got an anointing against cancer. Yeah. We're going to have to start assigning you anywhere there's cancer. Just you go and take it out. Yeah. He's got faith. Amen. That's what happens when you go to Kingdom Life University, right? You get in the Word and the Word creates what? Faith. Elijah provided the mantle. Elisha partook of the mantle. Elijah worked alone. You know, this, nobody walked with Elijah. He's a solo man. And just like we've been through probably one of the greatest periods in the history of America of solo ministries. Billy Graham, Oral Roberts, you name it. C, uh, Osborne, what's his name? T.L. Osborne. 
great men of God. Solo ministries. But how many know the day of solo ministries is over? Hello? Elisha was a team minister. You know what was following Elisha around? A bunch of other prophets. When he received the mantle, the prophets were on a mountain nearby watching. They said, uh-oh, I think he's getting it. And it fell on Elisha when Elijah was uh, taken up. And I love Elisha, man. He's going to test it right away. Hey, it's okay to test your anointing. Don't be afraid to pray for people. Don't be afraid to pray for miracles. Don't be afraid to raise the dead. We're still getting courage in America to raise the dead when they're doing it all around the world. You know, we just somehow it doesn't compute with our intellectual sophistication here in America. Hello? Let's believe God for great things. Come on. And so Elijah turned around, took the mantle of Elijah, and he struck the Jordan. And the waters parted. He said, oh boy, I'm getting ready. And he asked God for a double portion. Elijah, now, how many know you can't give twice of what you got? Can't do it. What you got is what you got. Only God can double the portion. So Elisha didn't want to be presumptive. He said, listen, if you, if you see me go up and the mantle come down, you got it. And Elisha stood there. Oh, he was hoping, believing, praying, saying, oh, let it fall on me, let it fall on me. And it did, it fell on him and he, and he immediately exercised it. Now Elijah's work was quick and powerful. <laughs> Elijah storms into the king's palace to Ahab's palace and he makes an announcement and then he goes and hides out in the desert because uh, he knew how dangerous that announcement was I'm kind of learning how dangerous some announcements are on the, on the, on the social media I put one posting up I found out what my posting was that took me out of from half a million hits in one month down to about 30,000 the next month just doesn't happen unless they algorithm you out. So I put this video on called Trump's Victory. <laughs> Trump's Victory. And all it was was the seven great things that happened under Trump's presidency. He did seven great things, such as appoint great people to the, uh, to the Supreme Court was one of them. Now I found seven great things that Trump did and I put them on in the video. Some announcements are a little dangerous, right? But that's okay. The Lord said, just let it go. He said, I got you covered. I got you covered. So I'm not going to worry about it. But I'm just saying, Elijah worked alone. Yes, Elijah worked alone. And Elisha's work was with a team and slow and developed over a long period. We'll take a, uh, questions at the end. Uh, well, over a long period of time, Elisha developed his ministry under Elijah. But he watched Elijah. He knew that the anointing on this man, Elijah, could be even greater on him. You believe God for a double portion of what I've got. I'll be happy to see anybody get a triple portion. I'm not jealous, hallelujah. It's God's anointing, it's not man's. Okay, and the spirit of Elijah lives on. Now Elijah's life ended. But it was so powerful, even in his death, they threw a dead man in on his grave. And when the man landed on Elisha's bones, he resurrected. How would you like your bones to be so anointed that if somebody fell on them after they were dead, you, they'd come back to life? That's pretty awesome. There's a little bit of power in those bones. Them bones, them bones, them dry bones are coming to life. Amen? Hallelujah. So here we go. Now, first of all, the contrast between Elijah and Elisha. I think it's very interesting to study. Elijah's ministry was three and a half years. Do you know Elisha served through four kings? Wow. It was a long-term ministry. It was a long-term ministry. So quite a difference between these two men. But God always, and in fact, Elisha had to finish what Elijah started. Elijah was commanded to do three things. Anoint Jehu. Anoint King Hazaiah for Samaria and raise up his progenity, which was Elisha. Those three things. He did one of them. 
So let me tell you, if you haven't fulfilled completely your vision, just raise up another generation to take it up and run with it. Come on. I don't think this generation, my generation, has done everything they should have done. But you know what? I see a new generation coming. I see a young generation coming. They're sons. Amen? And we're their fathers, just like Elijah and Elisha was a father-son relationship. And that's why when, when, when you say that God's going to restore father-son relationships, it was really the relationship that Elisha had with Elijah. Now, Elisha was an interesting character. I just want to say this, that he, he was a, an active man that was practical. God called him in the field. He's pushing the plow. Now, one thing about Elisha, he's faithful. You may have been pushing the plow of your vision for years. How many years, Carol, have we been pushing the plow? 15 plus years for Kingdom Life University. And I started this whole thing of evangelism. 1964. How many were born in, after 1964? Yeah. That's when my whole vision of evangelism started. God called me, started traveling across America, doing crusades in churches, doing television, doing all kinds of things. It was great, those early years in evangelism. But I'll tell you what, I, I just don't feel like my ministry's finished. In fact, the Lord actually spoke to me when I pulled up to that radio station to record Kingdom Life University courses. It took two years of recording nightly at WXYB Radio, I'd study all day, and then I'd go to the radio station in the evening, teach that chapter of the Bible, and that's how I finished it. And the lady supported that whole thing. Talk about a widow woman. It was a widow woman who, who, whose husband owned six banks. Yeah, she, you know who I'm talking about. And uh, she owned homes and different things, and she said, Jerry, I like your ministry. In fact, she said, here's what I'll do. You've been talking about going on the radio. I will pay for it for two years. So I was on the radio every night of the week, Monday through Friday, for two years. And then I remember the day she called me. She said, Jerry, I think our two years are up for the radio. I said, guess what? I'm recording Revelation 22 tonight. So I finished the entire New Testament, which is the core curriculum for the university. And I'm telling you, I'm getting responses. I just signed up another Pakistan campus yesterday. Another campus. In and he said, send me your studies. We're going through them already on YouTube, but we want to be organized and have curriculums and everything. And I, so I, I set him up last night so he can teach these pastors in, in, in uh, Pakistan. So Elijah appears quickly, and he's a powerful voice. We're just kind of halfway reviewing, but getting some new truth. He's a powerful voice. He is a voice crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. That's a good message. Prepare the way of the Lord. Get ready for the coming of the bridegroom. Get ready. That's John the Baptist. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his path. And John the Baptist did that. He prepared the way of Jesus. And he must, sit. he must increase, I must decrease. He ended up, lost his head. But he prepared the way of Jesus. Now the end time church, that's you and I, say me, that's me, Spirit of Elijah, preparing for the way of the Lord. And you're preparing the way of the Lord. You do. That's our heart. We're bringing people to Christ. We're preparing for the coming of Christ, which is a fulfillment of the kingdom. But even now, we, we're, we're asking God to come in power upon this earth before Jesus returns. We're entering into the season. It's going to be exciting. A powerful voice. Look at 1 Kings 17, 1. And Elijah, the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead, all right, said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, except according to my word. So first of all, his God was alive. We're kind of reviewing some of the earlier studies. His God was alive. He said, my God's alive. And when he acts, things happen. And he said, not only is he alive, he's present. 
My God's alive, but I'm standing in his presence right now. And we're standing in the presence of God as his ambassadors. See, I'm an ambassador calling people to Christ, preparing people to eternally rule with Christ. What's the theme of Kingdom Life University? Training to reign. In life and ministry. We are more than conquerors. We're kings and priests to our God. Come on. See, I'm a king and a priest. I'm seated in heavenly places with Christ. And everything is under his feet. So they're under my feet. Because what? We're joined heirs with Christ. We partake of his divine nature. Wow. So as he is in heaven, so are we in this present world. Come on, let's rise up to the occasion. So Elijah was quick and powerful. I love that. Uh, now, Elisha, very interesting guy, uh, he had a consecrated life. Everything about Elisha was consecrated. You know, when the mantle fall on, fell on Elisha, he took off his own garment. He ripped his own garment. How many know some things in your life need to come off before other things can come on? Amen. I mean, the Lord's dealing with us all the time about refining our walk. So we have greater potential to receive and move in his anointing. That's my heart. That's your heart. He was willing to separate he, you, you know, he, when he made a clean break, the legacy, we're reviewing a little bit, kings, kings and country, what? Isn't that the group that, from Australia? Burning the ship? Burning the ship. When the mantle from Elijah came on Elisha, what did he do? He drove his two oxen home, he slew them, he took his plow, he made a fire, he burned the offering of his two oxen, which was his way of making his living with his father. His father, by the way, was very wealthy. Any farmer that had 12 yoke of oxen was wealthy. So he left all the wealth. He just told Elijah, can I go home and just kiss my mom and dad goodbye? Elijah said, go, go home. And you know what? Then Elisha would not let Elijah out of his sight. Three times Elijah said, Stay behind, stay behind, stay behind. He said, I am not leaving you for one moment. You're, I am stuck with you and I'm going where you're going. And if you're going from uh, Jericho to Bethel, I'm going to go with you. And Elijah said, no, I'm going to go on now to another place. Uh, and uh, I've heard from Jordan to Bethel and then Bethel to, to Jericho. Uh, Elijah said, I'm going, just stay behind. I think he was testing him to see how serious he was. Because I believe Elisha had a promise from God. That when Elijah left this earth, he would receive the mantle. And he walked on that. He was going to stay. He was, he was consecrated. He was willing to separate. He was willing to serve. And then he had an effective life. Man, you see how effective Elisha was in reaching a nation? He's the one that trained the prophet to anoint Jehu that killed Jezebel and Ahab. It was one of Elisha's school of the prophets that went and slew Ahab and Jezebel. So God allowed him to serve many, many years. There's whole stories of things that happened. For example, Jehoshaphat. Ron, this is your theme, Ron Cannoli. Jehoshaphat's a great story. This man loved God. He was king of Judah, of the south. He followed in the way of his grandfather, Asa. And Jehoshaphat... Loved God and he knew God and he set up altars to the Lord in Judah. And now all the enemy is gathered against him. You know the story. And God says, go out. I, I'm going to defeat the enemy. But you know, how, you know how he got this word that this was going to happen? He said, bring me the prophet and the minstrel. Isn't it interesting that prophets move with minstrel? You saw it this morning, right? Robert? When you get the right tones of heaven going, right? It's a frequency of heaven. I love quantum physics. It's a frequency of heaven. All at once there's an entanglement. I call it quantum entanglement. Yeah, there's a quantum entanglement with heaven. And a frequency is released on earth that releases a freedom and anointing and power to destroy the yoke. 
So Jehoshaphat said, bring me a prophet. And the prophet said, now he said, bring me a minstrel. Get the keyboard set up, the sound system. Come on, we want to do some prophecy here. And the man prophesied, you're going to have a great victory today. The Midianites were innumerable, surrounded. I'm going to make an announcement right now, and I was praying about this earlier, whether I should do this, and the Lord says I should. Because here's what happened to the enemy. Jehoshaphat was ordered by the prophet and by the, by the word of the Lord to send the singers ahead of the battle. Hallelujah. Amen. The worshipers. How many know worship releases the hosts of heaven? If you want to move into victory, start celebrating in worship. When this whole thing of the elections happened, I said, Lord, what do I do? He said, start worshiping. He said, get ready. Something's going to happen. Now, what happened to the Midianites that came against Jehoshaphat? They all killed each other. I've got an announcement to make. In the next several years, the Democrats are going to self-destruct. <laughs> Watch it. Already on their way. Already on their way. It's going to implode. They're going to implode. And I believe these midterm elections are going to win back the House and the Senate and everything. And this nation's going to get back on course. And I'm a little political this morning. Don't touch, you'll shut me off there on Facebook. I'm just saying. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Wait. God's timing isn't always our timing. God told Elijah, go anoint Jehu today. Today, go anoint him and he'll kill Ahab and he'll kill Jezebel. They still reign for 13 years after that. Why? Because Elijah didn't do what he should have done. Now, I'm not excusing Elijah, but I'm just saying, you know, sometimes things don't always work out on our time scale. You know what I'm talking about? They don't always work out on our time scale. But believe me, they will be fulfilled. Amen. Right, Oscar? Amen. They will be fulfilled. You watch what God does. He's already got angel hosts working around the nations today. The, the angelic hosts are already released, I believe, in America. How many times have we done it from this classroom? We've appointed angelic hosts to go to uh, different cities in Washington and different things. I believe, I believe Florida already has so many angelic hosts working here. Because we're a favored state. And I believe God's getting ready to do something in California. I believe California is getting ready to turn. And it's not going to come through politics. It's going to come through revival. It's already happening with Mario Murillo and other people out there. That's why I moved to California years ago. Because the Lord said something's going to happen out here. And a lot happened back then. Back in the 80s and 90s, we saw a great move of God. There, you know the Jesus movement came out of California in the 60s? So get ready. I believe it. And then I heard something yesterday on the internet. It was interesting. He said, yeah, California is already experiencing an outpouring. But he says, the Lord showed me the second state that it's hitting is Florida. See, I'm ready. I'm ready for an outpouring in Florida. I want to see revival in this city. In this state, it's here already. I believe revival is already here. We just need to release it. Stop praying for something God's already done. He's already prepared us for it. Come on, I'm ready. Are you? I, we are. He had an effective life. I think there was something about Elisha that he just kept pushing the plow. And we've been pushing this plow of this ministry for so many years. I, you know, I'm almost blue in the face. But God says, just keep going. Keep going. Be faithful. You know, I learned something on the farm. Why does so much uh, biblical truth come off the farm? Were you raised on a farm? Yes. You were. There's something about the farm that teaches you to wait. Because you plow and then you turn the soil then you plant the seed and then you wait for the harvest. And I, I believe that God's work often is season. It happens in seasons. 
If you read in the Old Testament, they had a season of revival, a move of God. Then, then they would apostate again, and then God would bring another voice back to the nation Israel, and, and they'd come back to God. It, it's just the way it is. Now, finally, the conclusions of Elijah and Elisha. Wow. Both were men of great faith and greatly used of God. Men of passion, purpose, and power. I like passionate people. Elijah was passionate. You didn't think it took a little passion on Mount Carmel to get all that water on the altar and around the trench. and I, You know, they had to carry water a long way up that mountain. I, I don't know how long it took as the, prophets of, the false prophets of Baal watched, pouring water three times on all the altar and, and standing in the presence of Israel and said, come close, you don't have to hide anything when you're walking in truth. Come close and I want you to see what God's about to do. Well, I say to America, come close. You're about to see what God's about to do. Come on, come close. No, we're not going to go behind closed doors. We're not going to chase you out of the room. Come close and see what God's doing. Come on, this is the time. He, they're passionate people. He demonstrated a life of faith, preparing the way of the Lord. And then he demonstrated a life of authority and power. I like, I like what James and John said to Jesus. Call down fire from heaven. You know, let's, let's practice a little Elijah here, you know. When they were being attacked, James and John said, Come on, just do what Elijah did. Just command the fire to come down from heaven. <laughs> They're men of passion. Men of passion. And finally, Elisha demonstrated a life of faith and service. Faithful service. And then demonstrated an awesome power of a miraculous God. He walked in exactly twice as many miracles as Elijah. Two times the anointing. Double the miracles. Now I'm getting ready in my life to see more miracles. I want to see more miracles. I want to see people raised from the dead. Socrates comes in here and he talks about raising the dead like he's praying for the sick. In fact, he says it's easier to raise the dead than pray for the sick. Because a dead person doesn't get in the way. Sick people will start, you know, taking the word and twisting it and say, I can't be healed. No, the doctor said I'm sick. But a dead person can't argue, right? So Socrates says, it's easier for me to raise the dead than, than heal the sick. Well, I want to see more of that kind of thing in my life. I, maybe you have to go to some other countries for that to happen. But I'm just saying, hallelujah. <laughs> no, no, really? We're ready now? Yeah, oh, that's right, Christina, that's right, Matt and Christina. Yeah. Hello, Matt, see, you've you already been privileged. You're already walking in the double anointing, hallelujah. But I just, I don't know about you, but what, what the whole story of Elijah and Elisha does for me is it makes me want to walk more in the miraculous power of God. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, Jesus said. You will cast out devils. You will heal the sick. If any poisonous thing hits you, it will not affect you. I've been walking on that through this whole coronavirus thing. That's faith. That's faith. By the way, Buddy, you know, they used to come here. Buddy passed away this last week. And so I asked Alex, I said, Alex, how, how come he passed? He says, well, he took the, he took the shot. And after he took the shot, he, he started getting a lot of inf inflammation and then his blood clotting. And his heart stopped. So I, you do whatever you want, whatever God says, do it. But I'm not taking it. After I heard that about Buddy, I was like, come on. I mean, he wasn't well already. You know, he had some issues. But I said, Alex, you really believe that that, they, that, that vaccination did that to him? He said, I believe it. Because it happened right afterward. Well, I mean, a goes to B, goes to C, right? So sometimes things don't always work out the way we want. But just to let you know, be careful. Be careful. I, I'm just, I've got my mind made up. Even if I can't fly on the airplane, I'll just ask God to start teleporting me. Amen. We'll just teleport to some graduations over in Ghana and Kenya. And Philip did it, why can't we? Let's just teleport over. <laughs> you want to go with me? Maybe the whole class could go along. We all travel together through the cor corridor, right? 
show up for a graduation over in Kenya. Wouldn't that be fun? I think the church is going to see more of that kind of thing. I believe we're, yeah, yeah, it, it, it's already happening. So I believe in the name of Jesus that we are walking in an anointing today of Elijah and even Elisha. Elijah are the fathers, Elisha's are the sons that have even a greater anointing. And when Jesus ascended up, he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. But he says, greater works will you do than I have done. He's a form of Elijah, and we are the form of Elisha that get the double portion. I'm ready to see the abundance of rain. How many are ready to see the abundance of rain in your life? How many know I've already been through the fire? I've already been through the desert. I'm now ready for the abundance of rain. I'm preparing my heart to see a greater purpose, a greater move, a greater glory, a greater power, a greater revival move of God on the earth today. This is the time. This is the season. I believe now is, now is the time. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, as we've studied these two great men of God and looked at their lives and the difference they made on this nation, nation Israel, how, Lord, they cleansed the earth of evil. For this purpose was the Son of God manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. So, Jesus, if you were manifest to destroy the works of the devil, so are we. The sons of God and the daughters of God at the end of this age are manifest children of God to see the enemies destroyed, the work destroyed over our nation, over our lives, over our families, over our children, over our businesses, Lord. Now is the time to walk in a double anointing. We receive it. We receive it in Jesus' name.